Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're checking out the Buffalo WSR1166 today. This is a wireless 2x2 AC router uh, that is running though with a open source firmware from DDWRT and they sent this to the show uh, for us to take a look at today. Now uh, this is very similar to their WHR1166 in that they have the same wireless specifications and look the same uh, but this does have a few improvements under the hood that make it a little bit more expensive. So the WHR model again looks very similar to this one is like $39 on Amazon right now. Uh, this one is $99, but they put a faster processor inside of it, and they also have gigabit ethernet across its four ports here in the back. The other one only has a standard 100 megabit ethernet, so it's a little bit faster for uh, both processing, just basic routing functions, as well uh, as the LAN ports on here. Now, the reason why the open source firmware is significant uh, is because many router manufacturers just turn over their uh, product lines so quickly that they often uh, just, you know, after a year or two, stop supporting the router, and uh, you're left with something that could have a security vulnerability down the road that goes unpatched. So DDWRT, which is the firmware that is driving this device, uh, is uh, basically an open source project maintained by an outside entity that is keeping it up to date uh, much more frequently. It runs across a whole bunch of different routers out there. There's a big compatibility list you can see on their website. Uh, this one happens to come with it pre-installed. So you don't have to go through any of the process of uh, getting things loaded up on it. Uh, it is lacking a few features that you might see on other routers out there, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. So what they've been doing is kind of, uh, this is a different fork of the w DDWRT uh, operating system called NXT. So they're basically uh, kind of stripping out everything and rebuilding it up from scratch and maybe making something that's more attractive to router manufacturers. So there's going to be a few things missing from here uh, that will probably get put back in later. But as a basic router, it does uh, pretty well. And, and it's really not all that expensive for what you're getting. So a pretty basic uh, operation here. You've got a WPS button on the front here. Uh, some very basic indicator lights. They don't even give you any kind of LAN indicators. So it just kind of lights up when everything is uh, functional on it. And that's pretty much uh, all you're going to see for lights on it. Uh, there is a switch on the back here, which unfortunately doesn't work with the firmware just yet. Uh, this is something that is on the other Buffalo router where you can switch its mode. Uh, for example, you could disable the routing function and just have it work as an access point with a flick of a switch. I really like that feature on some of the other Buffalo routers. Uh, it is on this one, but it doesn't actually do anything just yet. So that is uh, uh, one thing that is missing from here at the moment. But uh, beyond that, it's a pretty uh, you know functional yet Spartan device. And uh, what we're going to do now is kind of take a look uh, at its operating system and see how that works. So this is the web-based control panel for the router. And as you can see, there is no Buffalo branding on here at all. So this is completely uh, under the auspices of the DDWRT project. I, I'm not going to go through everything on here, but I am going to show you a couple of things that I felt were uh, worthy of mentioning and a few things that are missing. So uh, in particular, you can get into the device via a uh, SSH connection, which is basically a command line terminal. And there are some features missing that you can turn on uh, through this, which is not easy. There's a lot of commands to type in. You got to go follow a whole bunch of guides. Uh, one in particular is guest mode. So if you're familiar at all with uh, most of the routers out on the market now, they have a mode called guest. So if people come into your home with a laptop that you don't trust, uh, you can put them on a segmented portion of, of your network so that your computers won't see theirs, especially if they have a virus or something, it won't uh, cross that wall. It's almost like an internal firewall. Uh, this has the capability to do it, but you have to go in through that SSH server to turn it on. Uh, very arduous, and I think, for at least for consumers at least, it's certainly not a friendly way uh, to get that feature that's on just about anything else out there. Uh, but one thing it does have that many routers don't have, some more and more are getting this now, but I was happy to see that they did put this in. Uh, there is an open VPN server. And what I love about open VPN is that it's very secure, at least more secure than some of the other uh, VPN options that have been on routers in the past. And uh, what it does is it requires both a username, a password, uh, and a certificate that gets generated on here uh, to conduct that very secure encrypted transaction between you, the client, uh, and the server that is inside of this device. And what's nice about the OpenVPN system is that you can get, get yourself access to your entire home network uh, without having to open ports in the router. So you have a uh, really secure means of accessing things behind your uh, network firewall, essentially, without having to make those items accessible to you and everyone else in the world. So that's a nice thing to have on there. Uh, but again, you're missing a lot of other things. Even things like the access control here, you can uh, you know, limit who can uh, access the internet on your local network, but you need to go out and find the MAC address for that device first. A lot of routers currently now are doing something where they'll list uh, everything that's connected to the network, both the IP 
address and uh, the MAC address so you can lock out those clients. This one does not have that capability. So just, it's just very basic, um, very, very Spartan at the moment. But I think that the reason why they're doing this is that they are really focusing on speed and stability. So I think they've taken out all of the features that uh, might create complexity and maybe they'll be adding them back in slowly over time. Uh, one thing I did notice though is that it does not have a means of automatically updating the firmware. So you have to go out somewhere, I don't even know where to get it at the moment, uh, to download the firmware and then upload it into the device via the web browser here. It's not going to alert you to when a new firmware is available. So I would like to see them uh, add that feature at least so you can at least conduct firmware upgrades uh, from the device and get notified of it somehow so you don't have to go through a, a rather rigorous process to do that. Because I think if you're really going to make uh, this firmware something that's going to be accessible to consumers, uh, you need to make some things a lot easier, uh, guest mode being one of them and certainly uh, the firmware update process too. All right, we're going to do a quick wireless performance performance test right now. I've got my Mac connected to the router via gigabit ethernet. Uh, the iPad is connecting to the router via wireless AC. We're going to push a 512 megabyte file from the iPad uh, through the router uh, over to the Mac. So let's see what kind of speed we get there. We're going to hit the go button here and uh, start transmitting that file. It goes off in segments here too, so it takes a little bit uh, to get that full file over there. And now what I'm going to do is pull up uh, the screen here so we can see what kind of speeds we get. And we're getting about 429 megabits per second for that entire file. Uh, so not too bad. It's certainly on par with what uh, you would expect out of a 2x2 two two AC router. Uh, it does very well routing also. I did connect it to my network and used it uh, to surf the web a little bit and uh, download a few files. And it seems like, you know, with one or two clients connecting, uh, it was working as well as a little bit more powerful router that I'm currently using in my basement. So uh, this thing I think will do well just in the basic routing functions that you would expect. Now, if you're going beyond like standard household usage and probably getting more than two or three users hitting it simultaneously you probably want to go up to their AC 1900 version I reviewed that one with the Buffalo firmware a couple of months ago uh, so you can check that one out and see how it performs so it's definitely a little bit more robust than this one is especially because it has a faster processor and more RAM which is what you need when you keep adding users to the mix uh, the range on this one isn't bad but it does drop off pretty quickly so having some external antennas which that uh, AC 1900 version has also might be important to think about too and the big question question is, is, is this worth double the price over the Buffalo firmware version? I would say at the moment, probably not. I mean, it certainly performs okay. I like the Spartan nature of the interface actually, but I think for consumers, they really need something that's easier to use, at least from the standpoint of firmware upgrades, because security is probably, in my mind, the primary reason you want to go with DDWRT over a manufacturer's own firmware. And right now, it's not a very easy process to getting the firmware upgrade. It doesn't notify you when there's a firmware upgrade available. Uh, you have to go find that firmware update either at the DDWRT website or on Buffalo's site, download it to your computer, re-upload it to the router, and then have it do its thing. And so many routers right now that are in the consumer space are upgrading themselves automatically with the manufacturer's firmware, of course. Uh, so I think if they could add that functionality to this uh, version of DDWRT running on here, that would be really helpful for consumers because uh, they're not going to update the firmware if, if, they, uh, if it's not easy. And right now it's not easy. And I think uh, having firmware updated frequently is very important. And it's really nice that you have a separate open source entity that's focused on the firmware for multiple devices, multiple manufacturers, and uh, not relying on the manufacturer who might uh, stop making this in a year or two and never update it again. So there is some real you know, potential here. So that is uh, the uh, WSR1166 from Buffalo. Uh, decent hardware. I think it's uh, got a ways to go uh, on the firmware, but it's good to see a company moving in that direction with open source. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.